What's going on everyone? Welcome on into the TC Trading Channel. Today we are talking about how to create a customized options trading layout here on the Weeble desktop platform. I've had some questions. I want to cover this. I want to at least walk you through some that I have found to be really, really useful and a layout that you can certainly replicate yourself and then of course customize as you see fit to your styles and your needs. Because like we've said, and like the videos we've got on the Weeble playlist here on the channel, there is so many ways to customize this platform like any, you know, like a lot of other platforms out there that it really comes down to your preferences. So if you're starting from scratch and you have no idea how to do this or even where to start, this is a great video for you. Try this out, replicate this layout. And then from there, you can go out and customize it, adjust things to, you know, what side you like it on and this and that and whatever you need to do. So right here, we're looking at one of my layouts that I like to use for swing trades where I'm not, you know, super, super worried about, you know, getting in, getting out of trades. It's just looking at the big chart, making sure I have all the information kind of in front of me that I need to look at when looking to get into a trade. But that's not what we're talking about in this video. If you want a future video on that or penny stocks or whatever other styles of trading, let me know in the comment section down below. But this is all about options and what I have found to be useful and how you can use the Weeble platform to make option trading a lot more simplified. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my options layout and you're like, oh shoot, what the heck just happened? You know, here we go. I'm gonna unpack this in here in just one second, but for those who are not familiar, I do wanna walk you through how we even get to this point. So on the left hand or on the left hand side of your screen, you're gonna go down to these different widget or these different, you know, cards on the left hand side. Uh, and you're going to go down to the customize little paintbrush tool. Then you'll have the options to choose layouts. And, and if you're starting from scratch, a uh, brand new account, or you've never made a layout, you'll look at something like this. Obviously, you're not going to have all these named and layouts that I've created, but you'll have something like what's up across the top or a blank layout. So I would recommend you start with, let's say, a normal or even a day traders layout, and then you can kind of customize it from there. But in this case, like it wouldn't be a terrible idea to go blank and then just kind of one by one add your widgets in. If you go with a blank layout, your top right, there is going to be a little toolbox that says add widgets up here. That top right toolbox is going to be, you know, it's going to open this up, which they pretty much give it to you before because obviously there's no widgets on the screen yet. So they'll give it to you just like this. Um, it will take us a lot longer than it needs to if I was to kind of build it out one by one. But essentially, like we've talked about in past videos, and like I'll just briefly mention right here from the widget, you know, box toolbox, it's going to have everything you need. Uh, and when I talk about certain widgets, I will, you know, talk about them with whatever they're called. So you can guys, all you have to do is kind of go back to that toolbox. And if you want to pull up those specific widgets, you know, there you go, it'll take two seconds to do. So I highly recommend you do customize this like we've been saying. So I'm going to get out of this, but if you did want to save this layout, there's a little save button um, right next, right in between the plus new layout and the toolbox at the top right, super, super small. You'll do save as customized layout, click on that, and you'll name it whatever you want to name it, and then you'll be good to go. It'll be saved. You can go back and jump back into that whenever you want to. Um, like I have, you know, essentially a chart only layout, I have an options trading layout, and I have a swing trading layout. Those are like the top three that I like to look at. To be honest, it's mostly swing trading and, you know, mostly swing trading, sometimes options trading um, for the most part. So I'm gonna get rid of this, and I'm gonna go to my options trading layout. So, Couple things that I want to cover first. This watch list tab on the left hand side, it is a watch list widget. Um, you don't need this. Uh, I, I like it just in case I do want to jump to different stocks pretty quick. But to be honest, I found that it doesn't, it's not like a super big part of this layout. It really is not. So I'm going to, because my screen is a little bit big to fit this. So I'm going to do is I am going to kind of adjust this. So our little small widget on the left-hand side, that's that watch list widget. I wouldn't worry too much about that for the purpose of this video. And to be honest, it's not gonna be as useful for what I like to do or for the, the options trading that we're trying to do here. So what do we need, right? If you're looking at an options trading lab, you're gonna need to know what kind of stock or what stock you're trading. So for me, visualize, to visualize it, I like to put the stock or I like to put the quotes widget, okay? The quote up in the top left, and make it nice and big, expanded, so I can see everything. Open, close, previous close, I can see you know the percent range, I can see the dividend yield, the volume, all that stuff. I just want to see it, just so it's there. Uh, certain stocks, to be honest, it doesn't matter. I think half of these numbers, or most of these numbers, don't matter at all. But maybe for your style of trading, it, they do matter. So I would make sure you have it. You know, if, if you can expand it to be as large as possible, great. 
uh, you'll be good to go. Now from there, what I'm going to do is up in the top right of each of these widgets, this is a really crucial, crucial part uh, of the video. Um, the top right, you're going to see where it says set as group. Please make sure you are using this properly. And if you have no idea, you know, what's going on, you're switching things here and they're not working. Like this is where you're going to find the most confusion on this layout. It's crucial that you make sure what you want to be connected is connected. What do I mean by that? So I like to keep the quotes widget up here in the top left connected to this left-handed chart. So what I did here is again, up to the customize add widget toolbox, right? All I did was under quote, I pulled up the quote widget right here. And then I pulled up the chart widget. That's the, the first two widgets that we're using are the quote and the chart. So I make sure that both of these are set to be the same group. It could be group five, it could be group two, it could be whatever, it doesn't matter. In this case, it's one. I make sure they're both set as a group one. What does that mean? It means that when I change the stock on one of these widgets, change the ticker symbol, whatever, it's going to also change on the other widget, okay? This is actually really, really important, okay? So IWM in this case, if I was to go and change this to spy, watch the screen, okay? So watch this, notice our two left-handed widgets, our, our quote and our left chart are gonna change. Everything else is not going to change, why? Up in the top right, I know it's small, there is a little darker blue number two, group two. So this is group one that I'm changing. It's only going to change group ones, okay? So I changed it to spy, boom, the chart just changed to spy. Okay, makes sense. This is why, it's, this, is, this is really important. So big picture on this layout, I also like to use this right here. This is the index chart. I also have a heat map overlaid as well and an industry map. Now, if you are confused on like, how do I have three widgets in one little box? When you add a widget, what you can do is I can overlay or I can bring this up and I can overlay it on top of a previous widget. For example, if I take this widget and I overlay it until the current widget that I'm looking at turns blue around it, I can actually overlay multiple widgets and then have like a little, you know, a couple tabs to go back and forth on. In this case, you know, not a huge deal, right? Index chart is what I look at. Why? Because I want to see what the trend is across the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ for the day. It's just, if I'm day trading something, right? Like I want to know what the heck is going on in the market because it's going to matter. If the market's all of a sudden tanking or the markets are up huge, right? That's going to potentially impact, you know, my bias on the trade. Like if I think we're going to be going higher or lower on whatever stock, I want to know the context of what's going on big picture in the market, right? Am I following the trend? Am I trying to play a trend reversal? Like, what am I doing? Okay. This doesn't necessarily matter what group it's set to, because when you change something on the index chart, it's not going to actually do, like, it doesn't affect anything um, elsewhere, really. So it doesn't really matter. I have it as group one, but it's not going to change. Like, you know, it's not going to, if I, if I go to IWM, right, for example, I just go back to IWM really quick. Th there's nothing to change on this on this index chart because these are just going to show you the same thing no matter what kind of they're connected to okay so that's the point or that is the use there um, now the next part is where it gets interesting i'm going to get myself off the screen so you can see everything that we're looking at now what is this so we have a couple different things so now under widget two i have it set as group two now we're going to be talking about everything to set as group number two what i do is i i pull a chart down okay I have a chart here as the second tab in this in this option. I also have the options um, widget pulled in. Why do I use the option widget? Now I go back up to that toolbox, okay? I will go to the quote and then pull up options and then just overlay that into the spot that I wanna put it, resize it how I see fit. This is the most important part and then the chart is the next most important part because what I'm looking at is I'm gonna now identify on whatever stock I'm looking at. So I have IWM pulled up here as group one. Now in this group two widget, I'm gonna also pull up IWM, okay? Cause I am looking at IWM, but I wanna try to IWM options, right? So if I'm gonna watch the stock price and the stock price action here on this left chart, on the right chart, I wanna make sure that I can watch the option chart as well. And if you're not aware that you can actually watch how the price action of an option contract moves, you can. Depends upon how much volume there is trading. If there's not much volume, it's gonna be more difficult. 
But if you're trading big name stocks with you know pretty high open interest, tons of volume on these contracts, closer to expiration and closer to the money, you're not going to have too much too much you know of a problem finding um, these charts, and they're going to be really fun to look at. So, in this example, let's go look at the IWM 190. 190 calls uh, right here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to click on and select one of the options right from this, you know, layout or from this widget right from the option chain. And obviously go ahead, select the, the time expiration date that you're looking for. In this case, you know, I'll go to like the next, the closest one. And I'm going to look at like says a 190 or I can go to like the 185 calls. Um, let's just see if we go to, if we scroll through here, we can see the open interest is actually pretty high on the 185s. I'm going to go to those. Now, when you select this, if you click on the last price, the ask or the bid, it's going to open up an order entry form. We don't want to do that just yet. That's what this widget, this classic trade widget on the right hand side is for. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on anything outside of the last ask or the bid price, the percent change, the mid price, the implied volume, any of those are fine. So if I click on, let's go here to the mid price, click on that. Now you'll notice that something just changed. The right-hand side of my screen just changed. The order book, the, the classic trade just changed, and the time and sales. We'll get to that in one second. But now, under this, under this um, contract, I have selected a contract, right? If I add a chart to this kind of widget box, which in this case I'd highly recommend you do, again, go up to the add widgets, go to chart, and then overlay your chart on that option chain widget, just like that. Now I have two charts. I don't need two charts, but that's how you do it. I'm going to remove that second chart. Now this chart, guys, is showing you, I know it's small, but it is showing you IWM 185 calls for the 12th of September. So that's this is showing you the option contracts that we have now selected, how they have moved over time. That is really, really useful. Okay, so now we can see how this has been trading. We can also see the volume. We can customize this chart, add, you know, trend lines, all that stuff, add indicators if I want to and go from it and run and go with that and run with it, right? As you see fit. That's what's really, really useful about this. So what I like to do is now I have the actual stock chart pulled up right here that I'm looking at, the underlying stock. Then I'll have the option contract here. I'll have a chart of how this is moving. Once I've selected a contract that I like, that has let's say a pretty tight bid and ask spread. It has good open interest, got a ton of volume, all that stuff. I'm good. Now we can back our way into the next widgets that I think are the next most important pieces to this puzzle. So now from here, make sure that these widgets are set as group two in the top right. What do we mean? I'm going to pull up an order book. Um, I, this is, this is your level two. If you subscribe to it, great. If not, not a huge deal. I do subscribe to it. So I'm going to use it, go to add widgets. And then from here, it says order book. If you subscribe to level two, it costs a few bucks a month. You're good to go. Or just pull up the order book and it'll have like the right, there's the, the bid and the ask. It won't have um, additional bid and asks, you know, above and below the current bid and ask. The top level is the current bid and the current ask. That's all you got to worry about. Below that, I will also now import the way or the method of trading. So I'll go to the trade widgets and I'll go to class. I like to use classic trade. It works for me. I'm not a scalper that's going to be in and out super, super fast. Again, it's up to you, but I'm going to use the classic trade. Now I'm also going to import the price ladder here and put that in there as well. We have a video covering this price ladder. If you're not sure what this even is, um, specifically explaining it, but the price ladder is actually really cool. And you can use this to get in and out of option positions. So yes, you can use the price ladder for options and you can adjust your, your trades or your, you know, your orders in here. Really, really cool feature. So if I want to use either of those to get in, boom, I can go ahead and do so. Then below that, I also have now time and sales. What is time and sales? It's going to be showing me all and the time. It tells me the exact time, the price, the amount of contracts, and the exchange that orders went through every single order. Okay, so I like to look at the bid and the ask spread. I like to have my trading uh, widget right here to get in and out, and then have my time and sales as well right here in the bottom right. It could be adjusted differently, but all of these are set as group two. This way, when I change the option contract or I select a different op, watch what's going to happen, okay? I'm going to select these 180 uh, calls for IWM. Watch on the right-hand side and especially watch right here where it says on the trade widget where it says IWM 185s. That's going to change just like this once I select it. 
to 180s. Now it has selected the new option. So when I select or I'm moving back and forth between option contracts that I'm looking at, everything here will change. I'm not gonna have to worry about, oh wait, I forgot to like, let me go enter the, no, no. It'll all work with you. That's what's useful. Now, why, and you might think, okay, like is there an easier way? This has been one of the better ways I have found to go about this because the problem you have is it's very difficult or it could be confusing if you have everything set to group one to now have to go back and forth between different charts, the order entry and this and that. Whereas I found that get your chart of the stock that you want set up on the left-hand side. Then on the right-hand side, pull up that stock, okay? And then from pulling up that stock, go to the option chain and figure out what option contracts you want to target and familiarize yourself with them. I would highly recommend that rather than just randomly jumping on in. Understand, okay, let's look at the price action of the options. Okay, has how is this option traded now? Do I need to worry about, you know, time decay? How, can I clearly see, you know, time decay on this chart? Is there a lot of volume or is there low volume, right? This is gonna be very, very useful to your ultimate, you know, trade at the end of the day. If I was to go to SPY, SPY has a little bit more volume. So if I go over to SPY, change our charts over to SPY, go to the option chain on the right-hand side here and go to some SPY calls for let's say the $400 strike, you'll see that the SPY chart is actually really, really nice. Look at, the, look at this option contract, very nice price action. There's enough volume here to really see it you know, play through. And you can really tell and compare where these contracts have been versus where the chart's been. So now I can see, okay, if I'm looking at buying in on this thing and I'm gonna use a, a you know VWAP, the, the white line volume weighted average price on the underlying stock as my stop loss, what can I expect these option contracts to pull back to if we were to pull back to there? Am I willing to accept that risk or where do I wanna enter? That's what it's all about. And that's where I think this is the most useful uh, in, in using this layout. So. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, leave them down below. Any other thoughts and other layouts or ideas, let us know in the comment section down below. I'm sure a lot of people will get some good insight from that. Uh, if you have any other questions, please refer to our WeWill Trading playlist and our other videos on the channel already. There's probably a lot of questions that can be answered there, but feel free in the comments. Happy to answer them as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll leave some links and resources down below. Some free stocks at WeWill. Also a webinar covering three trading signals to add to your arsenal for free. Check those out in the video description box and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.